So in your on click, we're going to have to tell the browser to remember this is it, or even in your on focus. Normal variables, you just create the name and then it equals its value. Uh, in the case of color equals red, that variable is already built into button, button dot style or whatever. But so that one's not really creating the variable in that spot. It's just setting the variable that's already set. And there's a whole bunch of other variables that are in the styles and IDs and like there's things that are in that layer. But for the most part, when you create a new variable, you just give it a name. So you could say color two equals blue, and that'd be a new variable. But color is already set. So line 35 is going to create a variable called color2 yeah. that doesn't exist until that moment. Yeah. So you got to be careful not to check to see if it's true or check its value until it exists. But we want to set a browser memory, not just a regular memory. So that's the proper way to set a regular memory, meaning that variable, when the people enter the web page, that variable doesn't exist yet when someone first clicks on one of the buttons and they become in focus, color 2 will exist. But with browser memory, uh, you do have to create it one time, but when they come back, if it's already created, it'll already be there. So when they revisit the same page, and every page has its own memory to it, like Google can have their own browser memory, our sites can have their own, and YouTube can have their own. Wait, yeah. anyways. So to declare a a browser memory, I made a command called remem. R E M E M. Sorry, color two. Remem? Yeah, a capital R. E M. E M. Short for remember. Yeah. And then square brackets. And then inside the square brackets and inside the quotations is the name of your variable you want to clear. So if you wanted to use color two as well, but really. We're trying to remember something here. We're trying to remember uh, button press. which button was pressed. So you, we can name this uh, variable what button was pressed, or what, like whatever you want to call it, but name it something. You can have spaces in this. That's what's great about these square brackets and quotations way of setting variables. And you're kind of forced to use this method here as well. Is you can allow you can have spaces. So even if you want a space between the word last and button, yeah. you can have a full sentence in here if you want. This is kind of the beginning of right. how you can have spaces and variable names. But the color two now is no longer appropriate, like because that's the old variable name you had there, and the word green doesn't. That's not really what we want to set here. Here we want to say, uh, well, this one is your special case for your login. So you can just put the word login. Is anybody going to do that again? No. Uh, well, yeah, we, we could. Same thing in the on focus for in the loop. Except for we won't use the word login, we'll use the word uh, index. Or the variable name. <coughs> Equals index. So now when you click on those buttons, the browser memory will have the number. So we're no. Uh no, we're just setting the variable so we haven't used it yet. So the way we're going to use it is when these things get generated, like so far we're setting them when you click on them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that'll remember you click on something, you want to remember that that's what you clicked on. But when it uh makes it because when they come back to the page it's going to remake it mm -hmm. that's when you want to check to see if the variable even exists and if it does exist if it's equal to the current button in the loop yep. so if that last button pressed equals the current uh, B name in your loop then you can say that's the selected one so right now the browser memory variable should have the 
be equal to zero because your index is zero because that's the first thing in the loop. So in your line 58 or 57, wherever you want to put it, but not inside any of the events, like go a new line, and this is where we'll use an if. Because we, we want to kind of select it, like kind of show that it's selected, by, capital I. but not capital F. Actually, I got two ways of doing it. Here you got remem equals this, but now we're just going to check it. So it's just mem, so you don't have because to me remem is used for setting it, and mem is meant for okay, for accessing it. Yeah, but you can just take out the re altogether. I got two versions of accessing. No? Yeah, and then the square brackets and the same variable name, last button press. Okay, we need to check first to see if it exists because it doesn't even exist yet. So that, so far, the if that is going to see if it exists, like if yeah. it doesn't exist, it'll be like zero or null, like it'll fail the if. Yeah. But then we also got to check to see if that is equal to, if that's the same as like the, the current index, like the line 57 is setting the current index, so like it's zero, one, depending where in the loop. Yeah. So we got to use the word and because we got to check something else. So space and. Uh, same. Now we got to check that. So you got to copy that again. We're going to compare it. With this. Yeah. Cool thing. Yep. And then you go space is. And then. Uh, index and hit enter now in the body here this is selecting it sort of thing you'd want to select it now because you've discovered that that button that variable exists because there's only going to be a small amount of time like first time visitors it won't exist yet so if it exists your returning customer and the last button pressed is index there is one little problem we'll have to fix. <clears throat> but this is where you would have like the same code, color equals red, border radius equals. Well, these two lines, line 64 and 65, yeah. they'd be pasted where your blinker is now, like your carrot. These ones? Yeah. Because that's, that's the code that shows that it's selected. Oh wait, this is almost ready to work. The only problem is index the type of a number like it's actually a number you can do math on it it's uh, B name is coming from line 52 and that is a variable that is a number that goes from 0 to 8 or whatever 0 to 7 depending how many things in your list browser memory variables they only have one type which is a string type so you're trying to say is is this string 1 equal to this number 1? And it is almost like that, except for you got to say convert these both to numbers, no matter what it is. And then the string version converted to the number version of it would be 1. And it would be like, it would be the. We got to convert the string version, that is the browser memory, mm -hmm. into numbers. On the left side of mem, try the double tilde. But get rid of the parentheses. Just two two tildes. That's another way of forcing it into a number. So now see how uh, Moses or Mooses is selected. That's probably the last one you had selected. Then go back. Oh, actually, uh, there might be an easier way of doing this altogether. You might be able to just tell it to go focus. Your line 59 and 60, you can replace those two lines with the word focus and parentheses, which the parentheses means call the, the function called focus. Now that we're calling this function, we have to make sure that function exists first. So on focus is on. actually, you don't have to use the word on 
when you call it, but when you create it, you got to use the word on. Like focus is a uh, sort of like create. Uh, well, you're creating it just a couple lines down on 62. So as long as the on focus, those lines are above 58, or 58 is below 60. Like you got to move those 58 and 59 to the bottom of the underneath on focus event. 62 to 65 has to move up, or 57 and 58 has to move down, or 58 and 59. Now you got on focus twice, but you only need it once. Okay, let's see if uh, you're setting the mainframe below or right here. Comment that out. Let's just see if that's it, or if we're setting it somewhere else. Okay, it's not being set at all, but it is turning red, like it's remembering the button. Let's see if you're changing the mainframe on the click or on the on focus inside your loop buttons. Because if it's on click, then that kind of makes sense why it's not being triggered when we tell it to go focus. Right. So scroll good. down a little bit inside your loop, because your loop starts at line 52. On focus, okay, your on focus doesn't have your main source changing. So you have an on click. Can erase the on click. That broke the button. Boy. You're not tabbed over. Here? The line you're just on, line 55. Well, yeah, you gotta erase the on click and you gotta have everything tabbed over where that line is not tabbed over right. So I should do it? Yep. but now it remembers. So if you refresh your website, will it remember which one you were visiting? So refresh it and it should be UFC. You can erase all that stuff now, all your comments. Or that code. There, so we reduced it. You can erase. You can erase that stuff too, just to simplify it. We'll add it. You know where to get that? Yeah, there's nothing there that's. Well, let's see before. You can re put in line three, because that would be there. That's like if no one's been there yet. Brush it, store. And you can set that as whatever default you want. Because it'll set it to that, but then right away, it'll check the browser memory as it's creating the buttons. And it'll focus whatever button was pressed last, which will set 
reset that to the new place.